Okay, so these slides are um, things I'm not doing enough of, or things I'm interested in, or things I want to do, and they're images of uh, friends' work, and images of my work, and quotes from people I know, and I thought that was a really important way to base this. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is this quote on the screen. So this is from Simon Nicholson. Creativity is for the gifted few. The rest of us are compelled to live in environments constructed by the gifted few, listen to the, listen to the gifted few's music, use the gifted few's inven inventions and art, and read poems, fantasies, and plays by the gifted few. This is our education and culture conditions us, us this is our education and culture conditions us to believe. And this is actually, sorry, this is a culturally induced and perpetuated lie. That was muddled, sorry. The image of the triangle is uh, something that Martin, a friend of mine from Leipzig, sent to me this morning. And it's, uh, it's a theory that he's developed with some friends. And they, they talk about this idea. And uh, he says, this triangle refers to the idea of the philosopher Walter Benjamin. In his writings on history, he talks about a specific weaving technique called kairos. In this technique, a finished carpet gets refurbished with golden strings. Little spots of the carpet get reopened in a triangle shape, and the golden strings, pe and golden strings pierce through. This is a metaphor for Benjamin's ideas about history. History is an already finished carpet, and the golden strings are revolutionary moments that can reopen history and make change happen. OK, next slide. Oh, no, that's me. Thank you. OK, so two quotes which I feel uh, are about me working, about working in Wales for me. And um, one of them is Lucy Lippard. And she says, the lure of the local is the pull of a place that operates on all of us. Exposing our, po our politics, our spiritual legacies, it is the geographical component of the f a psychological need to belong somewhere, one antidote to prevailing alienation. Another quote at the bottom, and the image in the middle of is a project in, uh, in Newtown. The edge effect is the idea that more, the more edge you create, the more biodiversity you create. Where a meadow meets a forest or a piece of water meets a meadow, two different ecologies meet. That is where you find the most biodiversity at the edge. And Wales is at the edge. It's physically and metaphorically at the edge. So this is a rich place for this work. So, Working with land and working with communities, critique and uh, working with privatization and all the things that we're facing at the moment uh, in civic landscapes and, and different politics. I'm thinking of Newport and the, the Clark's great work in Newport, resisting uh, fantastic uh, ideas, the council privatizing huge areas of cities like Newport, Swansea's getting completely ravaged by planners, by people who invest money into it and have absolutely no social conscience or any idea of creativity. They ask people like Terry Matthews to be their to be their advisors on urban planning. And they probably should have asked Donald Trump first, I think, but he probably wasn't available. So we got Terry Matthews of Celtic Manor fame advising us how to have a city. I can't see any conflict of interest there, but uh, that's for them to decide. Other models that we could be looking at to talk about land and community and ideas. Um, I, I'm really interested in permaculture and gardening as a kind of vehicle for these things. So I'm talking about forest gardening here. We're looking at Ebenezer Howard's uh, Garden City uh, concepts, even uh, Theatre of the Oppressed, Augusta Boyle, all these different things that exist in the world as models and frameworks we could be looking at to develop new ways of working with land. This is our relationship to land again. So uh, this is a quote from a friend of mine, Binter. I realized later that the park entrance was an imaginary punctuation that changed the language of our street. Now as an artist who studies landscape, architecture, and literature, I see the park as a kind of software. The designs of both Prospect Park and Central Park in Manhattan are early visual virtual systems that activate the senses with deep layers of information, from the plants and geologies from the, to the paths and common spaces. They're all constructed to be generated and exceed their original plan. The park is a great code, it's language. So I think that's a really interesting way to think about landscape and uh, green spaces in cities. This is a project that we're running in, uh, in, a, in a secure unit for children, 12 to 16 year old children. It's basically a borstal or a jail. It's called Walled Garden. And this is the image and the diagram of the project which we developed with the children to talk about the idea of what we're doing, what this system is about. It's about harvesting stuff. It's about growing stuff, it's about being sustainable, but also about connecting them to the landscape and the processes of life. 
So, as I say, growing it seems to be the vehicle for a lot of this work for me at the moment. Um, so, to develop conversa conversations about change and space. Again, this is more images of the garden project that we're working on at the moment. Uh, the role of the host is a really interesting idea in the practice uh, of, of a socially engaged artist. You know, how do you host a conversation, how you host spaces, yeah, and, and allow people to participate in things. And um, I think this is a really interesting kind of medium, and, and I think it's a really skilled thing that we need to develop, and it's something that I've been working on for quite a while. This is uh, Chinese elders in Swansea making pickles for a, p a tea pavilion in uh, Swansea city centre in the market. And also about this idea of exposing the skills of working groups of people. So when you get to work with a big group of people, like 100 people, on something like the VETCH project, you realise that actually within that group of people there are carpenters, there are ex-chicken farmers who can tell you how to do that, people who want to become beekeepers who've got knowledge of something else. So all these kind of expertise come to the surface and it's about hosting something which will bring all these things, like percolate these ideas. And this quote here from Jeanne van Heswick, which is, uh, things are moving so fast, people feel they are no longer part of the change that's happening around them. Art and social change, or as I like to put it, learning collectively to take responsibility. This is a project that I often cite, and I think it's a really interesting example of participation. This is uh, Walter Siegel, an architect who uh, worked with the Lewisham Council and the GLC and the radical writer Colin Ward to allow people to build their own houses. So people who are on the waiting list for council houses were given plans for a house, a load of timber, and a piece of land to go and work on. And they build these fantastic houses which are adaptable. So you can take the walls down, you can move everything around in the, within this timber framework. And it's 1979. And if you look at social housing now and what's happened to social housing in the UK since Thatcherism and you think this is a great model, it never took off but it's, it's a fantastic you know, utopian dream for us, I think we could look at that. So I, I use that as an example of participation a lot and it's a great, it's a great way of thinking and working. So I've just, uh, I've just been living in Copenhagen for the past three years and uh, spending my time between Copenhagen and Wales. I was part of a radical school called the School of Walls and Space, which was within the Royal Danish Academy, but was a school, a kind of radical pedagogic zone where the students ran the budget. We chose the lecturers. You got materials for free, everything. If you wanted to make huge sculptures, you didn't pay for anything. It was all part of this trust in art education as a gift and as a thing that should be available to everybody. It's free. You should, nobody should be going to UK universities. You should all be going to Denmark and Germany. Um, this is a map of the school. It's in three colours. So there's a chapel in the blue space, a huge kitchen in the yellow space with a tree in the middle of the table, a mezzanine with books and reading and beds. You can have a sleep. It's allowed. You're allowed to sleep. And there's a bar that we made as well where we brew beer and um, have parties and have performances. And this is one of our school dinners. So this idea of how you co-create the context that you want to work in. How do you work with your friends to make a nice environment in which to work? And how does that become an artwork? What does that feel like to do? Um, I'm also thinking about the professionalization of the art world and the art uh, education at the moment. You know, St. Martin's, uh, for example, is a new build space which has got completely inflexible working spaces. You, can, you have to share things. There's, there's t carpeted painting studios. You know, it's all a hostile environment for creativity. It, it's all generated, about, generated around the idea of moving quickly through the spaces, not allowing time for creativity, for poetry. And the worst thing could be you know, that people would ra rally together and work together. I think these are really threatening things to art institutions and to even places, quite radical places like St. Martin's, where you just move through the spaces. You have to book, you have to book a studio for an hour. So talk about legacy and sustainability of these projects. How do these land-based projects or community-based projects have a kind of long-term life? This is Vetch Veg, as seen from Google um, now. Uh, so this is the, the site of an old football field, and there's the kind of utopian drawing on the right that didn't quite work out. But you know, the, we had to do a drawing to show the council what we wanted to do, and then we had to change it to the right kind of language, and then they let us do it because they, it was an art project. If we told them it was... Um, a, a kind of allotment project, they would have had, a, you know, they would have been really scared because you know, there's nothing more threatening than people occupying a piece of land and growing, growing a leak on it. It's really politically quite dangerous. So, um, so through the kind of media of an artwork, we can subvert. So I think that's a really interesting idea. And uh, this is Vetch Veg now. This is it's still there. They're winning Swansea in Bloom. They're winning all these awards for sustainability, and uh, I can see it from my house, and it's great. 
Uh, and I'm going to finish now because I'm way over time probably. Uh, and this is a this is a manifesto um, <laughs> written by uh, school children, uh, nine and ten years old, and they looked at lots of different manifestos and then made this manifesto. So if you can, I don't know if there's a slide of that. Yeah, <laughs> can't remember. Okay, so I'll, I'll read it. If that's okay. But I'll, be, I'll be really quick. Um, friends, I'm creating a new way of life in which your ingredients will be returned to you. Our lives are controlled by rulers, by rules, restrictions, limitations, hatred, and big concrete things. So as of this Tuesday, I am removing power from our government and parliament and other rulers. The city shall be run by the elder generations like grandparents and generally old people. The old leaders will go to the naughty step where they will destroy all presentations and fax machines and become natural beings. I'm confiscating all mansions and making them flats for the homeless. All property developers report to the roof for training in building in the clouds. Nothing will be barricaded, it is a free country, no limits. Small family businesses are the only ones allowed and no money either. Everything is free or you trade products. Everyone shall be taught the art of sewing to make one's clothing. There will be no big stores or mass-produced products. Everything must have a history. No smoking, alcohol or unessential drugs. <laughs> we shall learn how to milk a goat. There will be compulsory napping from one till two for overworked adults and smallish children. Therefore, they must not walk but ride around on beds with wheels. People must share what they don't need. We will tear down all offices and workplaces and replace them, replace them with more farmland. Each of us will learn how to lindy hop. <laughs> we can travel if we want, but not all year round. And the air in the city will smell of freshly baked bread. There will be free bikes and tricycles for all. The city will be filled with the sounds of running water and birdsong. Cheese will be small and humans will be cheerful. <laughs> Adults will make giant teacup can sleep in it. We will grow all our own fruit and vegetables. Cornflakes and potatoes will be plentiful. Visitors need not bring anything but joy. This is my homage to you. <laughs> <laughs>